Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. That I am on the road to catching up with all the latest messages that I missed recently. So let's kick off with 1 Kings chapter 13. The last message I preached on this was just like, oh my gosh, there's so much good stuff in this chapter. And I get it, I understand it. Well, I wanted to give some of that understanding to you guys. And you guys can judge for yourselves whether my understanding of this is correct or not. It's going to be more of an overview and I'll kind of wrap it all up near the end. We have this prophet who comes to Jeroboam, blah, Jeroboam the king of Israel. Because Jeroboam, he's made his, two, I think it was two golden calves, if I remember correctly, and he led Israel into idolatry that way. And so a prophet of God's like, ah, oh, it's in good, man. Um, guess what? And then in verse 2, Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus says the Lord. Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David, and on you he shall sacrifice the priests of, of the high places who burn incense on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart, and the ashes on it shall be poured out. Now that sign happened that same day. The altar split apart. The ashes were poured out on it. And when the king went to, um, like, say, arrest the dude, when he pointed at the man to get him to, say, arrest him, was it his hand? Okay, I was like, is it arm or hand? According to verse 4, it was his hand. It instantly withered. And he was like, oh, crap, please pray to the Lord your God that my arm will be normal. So he prayed, his arm was returned to normal, and he, the king was like, hey, how about you come on in, I'll give you, I'll give you, uh, I'll, when it says refresh yourself, that makes me think a meal, maybe a place to like, you know, clean yourself up, and I'll give you a reward, some kind of financial, some kind of financial kickback. And who knows what the king's motivations were, we don't find out, the prophet's like, nope. I'm not going into you for anything. The Lord told me not to eat anything or drink anything on the way back to my house and to go back to my house via another route. So he just walked away from the king, and that was the end of that. It's pretty awesome the Lord when you just stand in the power of the Lord and you just tell a king what's going on, and you just totally spit in his face and say, guess what, you're not following God, judgment's coming. I mean, that is... That that that's pretty just uh, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty that's pretty rough and tough. And so he runs into an older prophet on the way to his home. And the prophet's like, come home to me. And he was like, Well, let's just read it in verse 16. He said, I cannot return with you, nor go in with you, neither can I eat bread, nor drink water with you in this place. For I've been told by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread, nor drink water there, nor return by going the way you came. Then verse 18, he, the older man, said, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. He was lying to him. You keep on reading in the chapter, the younger prophet goes to the older prophet's house. And then in the middle of the dinner, the older prophet says, Because you've disobeyed the word of the Lord, your body will not rest in the tomb of your fathers. And then when the younger prophet went home, a donkey, uh, not a donkey, he rode home on a donkey, and the lion killed him, left the donkey alive, and then the lion and the donkey just stayed standing over the body. And this younger prophet became a sign, basically, to all of Israel that his words will come to pass, that the Lord was involved in what he said. The Lord was also behind his death. And all of this to say, there comes a point in your life where you have to be sure that you've heard the word of the Lord. It's interesting that he, it sounds to me like this younger prophet was trying to be humble, trying to basically defer judgment to the older, more experienced prophet and say, well, if the Lord told him this, I guess I would trust him more than what I heard. You know, he's older, he has more experience. And no, he was supposed to trust what the Lord had told him and obey what the Lord had told him, no exceptions. Even when another pro the older prophet came to him and lied to him. Why would the older prophet lie about that? I don't know. But there comes a point in our lives when we're convinced of a truth and we have got to stick to it. We've got to abide by the word of the Lord to us. We need to have confidence in what the Lord's told us. And that is a really tricky thing when you're trying to not only walk confidently in what you know the Lord's told you and what you believe you've read from the Word of God, but at the same time to be humble enough to say, you know what, I don't know everything. I need to be open to other suggestions. It's a really incredibly thin line. And 
for anyone who would say, well, that show as heck was unfair. You know, he was trying, more than likely, he was trying to be humble. He was trying to follow what the Lord told him to do, and he was trying to give deference to someone who was older and more experienced than him. And that was wrong. He knew what he heard the Lord tell him. And the Lord, of course, doesn't go back on his word. The Lord doesn't contradict himself. So while being humble and open to other opinions, we also need to come to a point where we're very sure and solid in the things that the Lord tells us to do. Like in the book of Ephesians, it says we're supposed to not be babes where every wind of doctrine is tossing us back and forth. We need to find a place where we're anchored down, solid, and secure. And again, whoever just says, this that was way too much, that was way too rough, he was probably trying to be humble, he was probably trying to listen to his elders, well, he was at, it, obviously he was at a point where he should have had full confidence in what he heard before the Lord, he should have abided by what he, sp what he heard from the Lord and what he spoke for the Lord. I mean, miracles accompanied his prophetic word. So with those miracles in mind, he should have ignored that old prophet and say, you know what, I'm going to go with what I know is right. I'm going to go with what the Lord told me. What you're saying, I think you're wrong. I'm going to go with what the Lord's told me. And then he would have been fine. So yeah, despite you need to stay humble and you need to stay open, you also need to come to a point where you're grounded in the Word of God, both the Bible and whatever you feel the Lord has laid on your heart, to where you don't bend to others, even when they're older and more experienced than you. It, that's a bit of a tough pill to swallow, but it's just... It's a matter of, I would say, properly dividing the word of truth. I know there are going to be differences of opinion on this, but I believe what I've read and understood is right, and I'm going based off of this interpretation because I am confident in what I feel the Lord has shared with me and in my understanding of his word here. So immediate application right there in this message. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.